Welcome to Midnight Mule FPL. Mr. Mule still has no voice, so yet again I need to step in like some sort of hero to help out. This is the weekly video to help you finish in the top 5% globally, and therefore have a respectable finish in your mini leagues. The way it works is that if you choose any combination of players from this system then your team should be okay. I feel sorry for you having to listen to this, so to make this drab transcript a little more interesting, I have invited my girlfriend to help with this presentation. I'm not your girlfriend, and you said you'd pay me for my time. We start by quickly looking at how the players in the system performed in game week 24. Starting with the expensive keepers, Edison Flecken and Rea all did okay. The cheaper keepers did nothing. For the expensive defenders, the Arsenal boys did very well with 12, 12 and 9. Trippier and Trent both got 4 points, and that's all. As for the cheaper defenders, Senesi and Pinnock both did well. Some of the expensive midfielders had a good week, Saka with 15, Odegaard 10, Jota 7 and KDB and Son with 4. The mid-priced midfielders did nothing. For the cheapest midfielders, Palmer managed 10 points, Gibbs White 4, and that's all. There was no surprise that the best expensive forward was Haaland with 13 points. Darwin and Tony both managed six. Watkins had several chances, but he was a bit of a letdown for those of us who own him, returning just two points. I want you to know, that I would never let you down. Please, leave me alone, I am just trying to help Midnight Mule with this video. Some of the cheaper forwards did okay, considering their price. Archer managed seven points, Adebayo and Morris five, and Solanke four. Regarding this upcoming double game week 25, let's see what we think of the players in the system. Becca has two easy fixtures and you will probably do well if you have him, but don't buy him because he blanks in the next game week. Edison has a nice double game week, and next week's game against Bournemouth may also be good. He is expensive though, and transfers are valuable, so the rest of your team would need to be in good shape to justify buying him for this game week. Raya is a good choice. Leno is mayor. Man United definitely seem to be improving, so Onana is quite a nice choice, but goalkeeper transfers this week are a luxury only, there are probably better moves for you to make. Flecken has two difficult games this game week against Liverpool and Man City, so that is two chances he has to disappoint you. I would never disappoint you. Leave me alone. Sanchez has not played for a long time and is sellable. Regarding the cheaper keepers, Kaminsky has a nice double this game week and in game week 28, but he blanks next week, so only buy him if your other keeper plays next week. Johnston is injured and should probably be sold, but Pickford is always fun to watch, but that may not be a good enough reason for choosing which keeper to buy. Dubravka and Ariola are nice and cheap and okay to own, but Turner is a waste of space as far as FPL is concerned as he does not play. For the expensive defenders, Trent is injured and is sellable. You do not have to sell him, but we cannot be certain when he will be back and he is a lot of money to have on your bench. Trippier is expensive, but really rather good. Pedro Poro sometimes gets attacking returns and is okay to keep, but he blanks next game week so don't buy him now, and if you want to sell him to make room for someone else, that is fine. Saliba and White are good choices, as is Walker who has a nice double this week. Gabriel is probably the best Arsenal defender to get at the moment, but Estupinan has been a bit disappointing and is sellable, but he is playing against Sheffield United this week, so if you sell him, then he will probably get 10 points and a gold star. For the cheaper defenders, Adogi is good, but has no game next week, so don't buy him now. Colwell is away to Man City this week, and then has no game next week, so if you're wanting to get a new defender, then Colwell is an okay choice to sell. Doughty has a double this week in game week 28, but he blanks next week. If you don't already own him, then he is probably only worth getting if you can get 10 or more players out next week. Pinnock is not a great choice, but he does have a double this week. He is neither a buy nor a sell. Senezi's next two fixtures are tough, so not worth buying yet, but he will be all the rage in a couple of weeks' time with games against Burnley, Sheffield United and Luton in the space of two game weeks. Conser is injured and sellable. So, Connor Bradley. Here's an interesting choice. 
Trent Alexander-Arnold is expected to be missing for two weeks, maybe longer, and Bradley may get some minutes this game week. Advantages of buying Bradley now is that he is cheap at only 4.1 million, and he is a very attacking player. Disadvantages are that he may not get any minutes and he uses a Liverpool slot. He is a gamble, he could be lots of fun this week, but buyer beware. Now for the expensive midfielders. Salah is expected to get some game time this week, but not enough to justify buying him yet, but if you have him then he is definitely worth playing. If we knew that he was going to play 90 minutes in both games this week, then he would be a very good captain choice, but we don't know that he will, so there are safer choices this week for captaincy as we will see shortly. De Bruyne is a fantastic player, but it may be difficult to afford him with all the other players that you also want. 10.8 million is a lot of money, and if you had to choose between spending your money on KDB or Haaland, then Haaland is the safer choice. I would spend money on you. What is wrong with you? Sun is a good player with a nice fixture this week, but he blanks next week, so don't buy him. Saka is excellent. I think Mr. Mule has been consistent about saying nice things about him, even when other content creators were being less charitable. Odegaard is a good player, but there are so many good midfielders at the moment that it is not worth buying him, but he is fine to keep. Jota has a nice double game week this week, but then he blanks. Also, when Salah is fully fit again then Jota may get fewer minutes, so he may be getting sold by many managers after this game week. But for this week he is certainly a good choice. Midnight Mule seems to be in denial about Fernandez. I don't know why he can't just get him out of the system. Nevertheless, here he is. You don't have to sell him, but you can if you want to. For the mid-priced midfielders, Foden is excellent and has two easy games this week and Bournemouth next week. Madison has a nice game this week and in game week 27, but he blanks in game week 26, so don't buy him. Bowen has not been delivering much joy recently as far as FPL points are concerned, so he is worth selling for someone who will make an effort for you. Martinelli is okay, but not worth buying, also don't buy Richarlison this week as he blanks next week. Sterling has a difficult game against Man City this week and then blanks next week and is sellable. The only redeeming factor for this week is that players often do well when they go back to a club they used to play for, so maybe he will get a goal and some bonus points, but probably not. We were lied to last week regarding the extent of Gordon's injury, he is fit and as such, a good buy. For the cheapest midfielders, Ward Prowse ticks along unpredictably, perfectly sellable, but fine to keep if you want to. Palmer is a very good player, but away to Man City, and then a blank, he is not worth buying this week. Neto is a good player, he is cheap, so all things considered, he is a good buy. Gibbs White ticks along at quite a low baseline, not worth buying, but you don't need to sell him if you want to keep him. There are definitely better midfield choices. If you have He Chan then he is worth keeping, but at the time of recording he is flagged as possibly still a bit injured, so don't buy him. Barkley was worth buying last week, but not this week unless you need a cheap midfielder to release some funds. He has two difficult games and will probably score between 4 and 10 points this game week, but he blanks next game week, which is a guaranteed zero. Garnacho is an excellent player, and I like what he does with his hair. Do you fancy him? I don't think you are his type. Why are you being so mean to me? I simply said something nice about him and now you are getting all weird about it. Regarding the forwards, if possible, you should really have Haaland in your team. Many managers will be triple captaining him this week, so if you don't have him in your team then you may be in for a world of pain. However, it is not worth taking lots of hits to get him in, but if a minus 8, or maybe even a minus 12, lets you get him and the rest of your squad is still pretty good, then it may be an investment worth making. Watkins is a good player, but not worth buying this week. He has been sold by many managers who need the space for Darwin or the funds for Haaland, but if you are able to hold him then he is probably worth keeping for now. Tony has a double game week, but the games are against Liverpool and Man City. However, he can score against anyone, so he is just about a green this week, a good buy. Gezus may be injured, so he is fine to sell. He is a good player, but there are better FPL choices at the moment. Darwin is a good buy, two easy games this week, but blanks next week. Nkunku is just taking up space in the system as there are so many safer choices, so he is a sell.
We had Hoyland in this system for a long time, but we removed him when it looked like Man United were being so slack about getting better, and then he started to score points. He is a good player and a sensible price, but there may be three or more other forwards that you would prefer. Solanke is being sold by managers to make way for Darwin, but Solanke has Burnley in game week 27 and a double in game week 28, so managers selling him for Darwin will be reversing the transaction soon. However, this may be a move worth doing, so he is fine to keep, but okay to sell if it definitely helps your team. Alvarez has a double and may get a good score this week, but he takes up a Man City spot and Haaland, KDB and Foden are all likely to get a better score. He is absolutely fine to keep if you want to, but he is also not one of the best three forwards to have at the moment, so is sellable. Joao Pedro is injured, we are selling him. Morris and Adebayo have a double this week and in game week 28, so well done if you have either or both of them, they're nice choices for this week. Malpe is a cheap and cheeky punt for this double game week, and in the future he can just sit on your bench if you want as this will free up cash to invest elsewhere in your squad. Archer is bench fodder. Was it you that sent me that weird Valentine's card yesterday? How could you tell? It was unsigned. There was a spelling mistake. What did I spell wrong? AI. We will now look at the suggested benching order for the keepers. You can do whatever you want, this is just a suggestion. The first goalkeeper that we show you that you have goes on your bench, hence you will play your other keeper. Sanchez, Turner and Johnston will probably not play, so they are benched. The order for the rest are Ariola, Leno, Onana, Dubravka, Pickford, Rea, Flecken, Kaminsky, Edison and then Becker. Regarding the outfield players, we will now look at them in reverse order, from most benchable to least benchable. The first player you see that you have we suggest you put in position 3 on your bench, the next position 2, and the last position 1. If we don't show a player, it is either because they are injured, or because you will be playing them, for example, Saka, Jota and Haaland will all play. Archer, Colwell, Sterling, Gibbs White, He Chan, Neto, Ward Prowse, Palmer, Martinelli. Bowen, Adogi, Estupinan, Senesi, Pinnock, Poro, Fernandez, Malpe, Jesus. Odegaard, Hoyland, Madison, Richarlison, Barkley, Garnacho, Gordon, Sun, White. Hopefully your bench is already full. But just in case it isn't, we will finish with Saliba, Gabriel, Solanke, Trippier, Doughty, Saka, Morris, Adebayo and Bradley. Regarding captaincy, if you have Haaland, he is the standout captain choice for this week and should really be the one who wears the old mule hat. You may not get a better chance at a triple captain this season, so if you captain Haaland then seriously consider playing your triple captain chip. Not everyone has Haaland. So other captain choices for this week would include Darwin, KDB, Foden, Jota and Tony. If possible, pick your captain and vice-captain from these six, but if you can't or don't want to, then any of the green players we saw earlier would be fine. Regarding the background picture, this video was created on the 15th of January, and as you all no doubt know, that is the birthday of Galileo. Galileo reckoned that the Earth rotated daily and was orbiting the Sun. This picture is an authentic 16th century painting of Galileo using a football to try to explain the process to the Catholic Church who opposed his theory. So there we have it, suggestions for the 5% series for game week 25. This video was a ridiculous amount of work for the old mule. Which was no doubt made more difficult by you going off script all the time. We all hope that the voice returns before the next video. In the meantime, let's hope we all have massive green arrows for our FPL teams this week. Thank you very much for watching, bye for now. Do you want to go for a drink now? Oh, alright then, but just as friends. Yes, of course.